What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Underswell with me, Derek Sabori, your sustainability guide. Hey listen, today I wanted to talk about a few terms that came up in a forum in which I chimed in on. It was an industry forum and the words that were being discussed were a few that you are surely hearing about, seeing in your products, reading about um, all over the place. Recycled, upcycled, downcycled, circular, um, and even repurposed. These are all words that everybody kind of goes back and forth on and perhaps even has different interpretations of. So today what I wanted to do is break down those words and give you some examples of how I see those words being used and how best to understand them and describe them. So let's start with the recycled, upcycled, downcycled controversy controversy, if you will. So to me, recycled, um, I like to use, for all those terms, I like to use one word to keep them all in mind and help differentiate between them all. And that word is value. So value, um, if value is being added to a material, so if it's going, um, if, it, if it is being reused and turned into something of greater value, then we're going to call that upcycled. And if that material or that product is being recycled in a way that it is being used into um, a product of lower value, then we're gonna call that downcycling. And if a product is being used and recycled over and over to be the same um, product or, or essentially the same material again over and over, then the value stays the same, we'll call that recycled, right? So examples. This can, this Perrier can, once I'm done with it, it's going to recycling, but what do you think is going to become of this can? It's going to stay as aluminum and likely become another can. So aluminum is great because it maintains its integrity and its quality almost, um, I don't not necessarily infinitely, but on and on for a really long time. So it can be recycled over and over and maintain its integrity and its high value and quality. So recycled, a can to a can, same value, not upcycled, not downcycled, recycled, okay? Same thing with plastic, right? Most plastics, um, plastic bottles, you're gonna look for your code on the bottom of them. This one actually has a number two, and depending on where you live and what your recycling systems are, you're gonna find um, that number ones and number twos are your most commonly recycled plastics. But again, this plastic is going to be recycled. It's gonna be recycled into plastic again, and most likely end up in a similar type container. And this Myers um, clean, uh, cleaning soap um, just reminded me of something. Labels, so we're gonna start looking at labels. I'll pull up, uh, I'll do a video here on labels pretty soon, but this one has the uh, USDA certified uh, bio-based product on there. It has a uh, recycled symbol, but certifications and labels are all good things that we need to navigate through as well. They're important and I think they are valuable, but we'll go through, th through those in another episode. But again, number two plastic, don't put something that is doesn't have a recycling symbol on the bottom of it in your recycling bin. Most then, um, in that case, especially with plastics, it's not a plastic that's going to be recycled. And if you haven't, um, if you haven't heard kind of the state of the recycling industry right now, especially here in the U.S. after China stopped taking so much of the plastic that we were the the waste that we were sending to them to be recycled, it's worth a listen. It's on NPR. Just look up NPR. Um, recycling, there's a great story there. I'll put it in the link of this video, perhaps that tells you about the history of recycling, how we even got to where we are, and also um, the state of recycling today. And uh, spoiler alert, it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a oh man, bummer story, all right? So plastic is gonna be recycled. Um, but speaking of numbers on the bottom of things, these items here, um, we have a, a tofu container and a hummus container. These are number five plastics. If you look on the bottom of them and you see a number five, number five is not readily recyclable in your common recycling system, all right? And just because I think it's a hard plastic to recycle, you'll find this usually in food grade containers, number five, so, um, or these, uh, these hard plastics. But what you can do, and it's the same thing that I do with, my, uh, with our toothpaste, um, uh, tubes after we're done. If you look on the back, there's a little symbol here and it says um, goodness equals less in landfills. And there's a symbol here. It looks like a little in, um, infinity symbol. 
And that symbol is from TerraCycle. TerraCycle has this great program where you can take, they'll take back things like this, chip bags, um, candy wrappers, all sorts of different things. These toothpaste tubes uh, specifically, and these can um, go back to them and they will repurpose them into new things. They had some, some cool programs where they were taking back plastic bags from brands and turning them into park benches and playgrounds and things like that. So really cool organization. Check out TerraCycle. And if you're a brand, you can partner with them. And if you're a consumer, you can buy products that were made with TerraCycle items. And then also on the table here, so then speaking of these number fives, back to the number fives, here's another thing in my goodie bag. Um, here's a container that was uh, made. So I send our number fives to a company called Preserve. They have a program called Give Me Five. If you go to Preserve, Give Me Five, you can send your number five plastics to them to make sure that they are recycled. So those number one, generic number ones and number twos, number one is PET, um, polyethylene terephthalate. And that number one PET can be recycled into bottles over and over. That's typically what plastic bottles are, drinking um, beverage containers are. Number five is usually for food. Your recyclers typically don't like number fives, but Preserve does. So send them to Preserve, the Gimme Five program. Maybe a store in, a, in, your, in your area has that drop off, a drop off location, but we have to ship ours out. We put them in a box, save them up, and ship them out. But Preserve makes cool things like little containers. They make toothbrushes and all sorts of different things out of those number fives. So again, recycling, making number five plastics into, into number five plastics again, but perhaps with a little touch of upcycling because we went from a disposable container to a reusable container, so kind of on the verge of recycling versus upcycling. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about recycling. Let's talk now about downcycling. <laughs> we'll start there because downcycling is this idea when something, um, t-shirts and jeans, and those are, those are products that often get downcycled into wiper rags. Um, it's called the wiper industry, or even recycled into batting and stuffing for um, carpet padding, couch fills, um, sometimes the batting in the, in the seats in your cars. So that might be considered downcycling. Even um, insulation, denim can be used for insulation for, um, for housing. So that might be considered downsizing, um, downcycling because we took a, a nice apparel product and now it's just being shredded up and being put into lower, a lower value product or commodity item. All right, so that's downcycling. Upcycling, on the other hand, is when we turn something up into newer, greater value, right? I'm gonna show you something here um, that I think is cool. So for example, um, Cosm shirts. So my brand Cosm, that's one of the fibers that we use is from a company called Recover. Recover Yarns, um, Recover Textiles. And what they do is they take old post-industrial scraps or pre-consumer scraps. So scraps that have ended up on the cutting room floor after fabric has been cut around the patterns, there's a lot of scrap waste. They take that scrap waste and what was once waste, upcycle it back into new, really high quality fibers. They mix it, they blend it often with a, um, a recycled PET fiber, but a sense, in, in essence, you take that floor waste and upcycle it into new yarns that can be made into new great products. So that is upcycling. We take products and we upcycle them into new and improved products. Another item that might be um, upcycled, but maybe verging on um, repurposed is something like this. So this is an iPad case and it's made out of old vinyl banners. So there are some great companies out there doing things like Rareform and, and others who take old vinyl from billboards. Um, and in this case, this was a Volcom um, event banner for the big surf contest that they have. They have all the vinyl banners and they, we turn them into um, changing mats or um, containers, tote bags and things like that. So this is not necessarily recycling. We would maybe call this repurposing. We're repurposing that material um, or you're even maybe turning it, that was also waste, turning it into another new product. Perhaps we can call that upcycling, but um, definitely not just recycling, but we are either upcycling or repurposing uh, a material. Here's another item that was repurposed. So this is from a company called Looped Works, L-O-O-P-T Works. And these guys, I don't know if you're, um, if anybody's old enough to recognize this, these colors, this is a leather. 
but these were from this company takes old materials that are left over from industry that need a home so southwest airlines at one point many years ago um, needed to upgrade all the leather in their seats and they had all the the leather that was from their seats they wanted to change it over didn't know what to do with it they didn't want to send it to the landfill so what they did is they contacted loopworks and loopworks made this great luggage collection out of um, it's a big bag, big duffel bag, but out of that leather. So it was a great, cool kind of co-op. And this is definitely a bit of upcycling and repurposing all in one. So that's a bit of the, um, the story with Loopworks. Check them out, though. That's kind of cool. And then um, back to our products as well, upcycling and repurposing. I want to now touch on this idea of um circularity and how circularity compares to recycled okay so if we look at these shorts the volcom shorts these are volcom shorts that are made with recycled polyester number one pet plastic bottles so plastic bottles number one pet is the same it's the same element the same polymer that is used in polyester so essentially that's why we call polyester nylons plastic based fibers but we can use that recycled PET to put into, into shorts and make recycled, uh, make shorts with recycled polyester. It's good for the environment. It has a smaller environmental footprint because most of the environmental impacts from the apparel industry are associated with raw materials and raw material processing. So if we can eliminate that extraction of, and, and that, that reliance on virgin fossil fuels and uh, take um, uh, materials that are already in existence, then that is good. However, this is not the perfect solution because we're taking another industry's waste and taking it off of their hands and putting it into products. This product is not a circular product. It is made with recycled fibers, which is good, but that is not circularity, okay? But what is getting towards circularity is this brand called Four Days. So I haven't done a, b a bit of, uh, I haven't done the research to see who's doing it for them because everybody in the apparel industry is really hoping for circularity. But circularity is this idea where when I'm done wearing this t-shirt, I send it back to four days and that's what they are all about. I'm gonna send it back to them and they're gonna take this t-shirt and chemically or mechanically recycle it into new yarns, into new fiber that can be put into new yarns to make new fabric to make another t-shirt. So from taking a t-shirt, using this material when it's done to make new fiber, new yarns, new fabric, and new t-shirts again, and we're doing that over and over and over again, not tapping into any new resources or materials, then that is circularity. And circularity is great. And when this board short can be turned back into the brand, can be turned it back into Volcom, who will then use it, use those embedded resources and all that material and fibers that are in here, sort them all out into the right fibers and then upcycle them into yarns that can be made back into board shorts, that is circularity, right? But we're not there yet. Right now, this would basically um, go off to Goodwill or we'll give, somebody else, uh, give it to somebody else to wear it and use it but we're not quite at that point where we can just turn all of our stuff in and have it um, made into new products over and over. Four Days is saying that's what they're doing. I'm not quite certain of what their technology is and who they're using because there are a lot of, it's kind of a, an arms race to find the, um, the best chemical company who can separate all the fibers. But when circularity comes, we need to be careful because it just doesn't mean that we can just consume more and use more. We still have to be careful about how much product we buy, how much we use, how long we use it for, and respecting those resources that are in there. So materials deserve to be recycled. It's great when they can be upcycled. It's eh, okay when they're downcycled, but at least we're extending that life. And always repurposing what we can is really great. And circularity is something that we are striving for, almost kind of at the tipping point of getting there. The circularity keeps things in a closed loop, a, a safe closed loop that re uses renewable resources and renewable energy to power that system. And recycling is kind of like your cans, your plastic, your cardboard, your papers, is cardboard box. Cardboard is gonna be recycled into new cardboard. So hopefully that helps with this idea of recycled versus downcycled versus upcycled versus repurposed versus circularity. If it doesn't and you have any questions, leave a comment, let me know. And if you've got any topics that you wanna talk about or learn more about, hit me up. I'm Derek Sabori, this is The Underswell and I'm your sustainability guide.